Welcome to another Ultralight Airplane Design video from the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. In this video, we're continuing the design of the UWS-4 Ultralight Airplane, which is part three of a little mini-series we're calling Stuffing. And the reason this little mini-series is called Stuffing, because it's based on chapter four of a book from Dan Raymer. And that book is Simplified Aircraft Design for Home Builders. And that chapter is titled Stuffing Some Stuff In It. What he's done is he's grouped a number of things into this chapter to put into the airplane that aren't necessarily part of the aerodynamic design, but of course you need to have it and you need to think about it because those things can have an impact on the aerodynamic design. And one of those things, of course, is the engine. The cowling around the engine, of course, is going to have an impact on the aerodynamic design and how you cool the engine, the size of the openings, the input and output, that can affect the drag of the airplane. And by the way, the segment of the chapter we're working on that covers the engine is called In Goes the Engine. Let's get to it. Before we get too far into this, let's talk a little bit about what we learned in the last design video for the UWS-4 Ultralight Airplane. In the last video, we talked about the landing gear. We chose a tail dragger configuration, and the main reason for that is we needed to save some weight. Some of the design decisions we made early on, it's gonna make the airplane a little bit heavy, so we're gonna to have to do some things to try to save some weight, and choosing a tail dragger configuration over a tricycle configuration will help us. We calculated the diameter for the main gear on the airplane. That's around 13 inches, but we can go plus or minus an inch or so. In order to figure out where to place that main gear, we first came up with an estimation for where the aft center of gravity would be, the furthest backward center of gravity. And then we drew a 25 degree angle from that aft CG down to where we intersected the 12 degree landing line. And then to get a first estimate on where the forward CG would be, we then went from that intersection with the 16 degree line up to the same height as our aft CG. And that gave us our first estimate for the forward CG. So with our gear at this location, we have a pretty good idea that we should be able to lift the tail when we're trying to take off. It won't take too much force to lift it. And we're less likely to tip over forward if we slam on the brakes or we hit a small ditch or something like that. And also we wanted to figure out if we could tip over sideways, if we're taxiing fast to make a really hard turn, we want to be fairly confident that we're not going to tip over. So we found out that that angle between our wheels and our center line of the airplane is 42 degrees, 42 and a half, and we needed to have it between 25 degrees and 60 degrees. So that works out great. We're unlikely to tip over sideways in a sharp turn. And since we have two booms on this airplane, we're going to put a tail wheel on each boom. And as I mentioned before, what we use to help guide us in all these decisions is Dan Raymer's book, Simplified Aircraft Design for Home Builders. But of course, we're modifying it when we need to, to apply it to ultralight airplanes. Now Dan has a lot of great information in that book that we're not using. He talks about other configurations other than the one we're using. And if you want to design a home belt, that information in Dan's book will probably be more applicable to you than what you're going to see in these videos. These videos are just a one example of how to implement Dan's book. And by the way, if you want to get Dan's book, I'll put a link down in the description that will take you to an ultralight airplane workshop page that has several links on there of books that I frequently use. And one of them is going to be Dan's book. Actually, two of them will be Dan's book. Now, if you use one of the links to buy one of those books, the channel will get a cut of the proceeds of that sale. The section of Dan's book that talks about inserting an engine starts at page 51 if you guys are following along at home. And the things that Dan talks about are choosing a tractor versus pusher, the use for a firewall, and inlet and exit cooling areas. Well, let's get to it. Dan mentions in his book that a lot of the things, particularly in this particular chapter we're dealing with, have to be considered earlier on in the design. And the tractor versus pusher configuration is one of those things. So that makes it so the book isn't necessarily step by step. Now the aerodynamic part was, but there are things that you need to consider while you're doing the aerodynamic part. We decided early on in this design that we were going to do a pusher configuration. We couldn't really have waited until this point in Dan's book to decide that. Now Dan talks about the consequences and the pros and cons of the tractor versus pusher configuration. The reason I wanted the pusher configuration is generally you're going to have the engine back toward the trailing edge of the wing. That means the pilot will have to be moved forward in order to balance that out. And with the pilot a little bit farther forward, especially since we chose a low wing configuration, that'll give better visibility to the ground for the pilot. So that's why I chose the pusher configuration. And that's why quite a few ultralights have the pusher configuration. Now another potential, at least possible pro for having the pusher configuration is that you have a possibility to have less noise for the pilot. Generally that muffler is gonna be behind the pilot 
and it's going to be downwind, so that's going to be a little bit less noise from that. Dan put this down in a footnote, and that is that the propeller should be about a third of the cord of the wing behind the trailing edge of the wing. Now, a significant reason for that is as that propeller is swinging around, there's going to be air just in front of that propeller is being moved around. It's going to be impacting the trailing edge of that wing if it's too close. And that will create noise. So that's why you may or may not get less noise for the pilot. Now, if you've looked at a lot of these pusher configuration ultralights, they're a little bit closer than a third of the cord of the wing behind the trailing edge. And that'll be the case for the UWS-4 also. That's because in order to move that prop further back, we'd have to have more structure to move it back and it's gonna add more weight. So I'm gonna have it back maybe uh, about a 10th to 15% of the cord behind the trailing edge of the wing. Of course, there are drawbacks to the pusher configuration. Your prop is generally gonna be less efficient because it's gonna be in disturbed air coming off the wing and off your fuselage. And we already mentioned this, that that prop can generate more noise if it's close to the trailing edge or just about any other aerodynamic surface. And having that engine a little bit farther back behind the CG and thus the pilot farther in front of the CG, you're gonna have more moment. In other words, there's more momentum, angular momentum, when you're changing the pitch or the yaw of the airplane. That means it's either slower to start rotating or stop rotating if you have the same size tail surfaces or you have to make those tail surfaces larger in order to counter that movement. And these aren't the only pros and cons. Dan has a really huge list if you get his textbook, the big fat book. And there's a link to that over in the Ultralight Airplane Workshops book resources webpage. Now, as Dan says, it's really good to have a firewall between the cabin and that engine. Because it's always possible that you could have a fuel leak and that fuel will catch on fire and you have a fire in the engine compartment. Now, this is really critical if the engine is in front of the pilot. You don't want flames coming into the cabin and burning your pilot as he's trying to get down to the ground. It's not quite as much of an issue with the push configuration, but really, you still don't want to have a fire that close to your pilot and to your wing and to any other structure of your airplane. So you really need to have a firewall. Now, he recommends having a steel or stainless steel piece of sheet there in the firewall. Now, he didn't mention it, but you really should not use aluminum. If that fire gets hot enough, believe it or not, aluminum can burn, and then your firewall is pretty useless. Although your aluminum firewall will probably melt before it catches on fire. Now, I've already got a thin piece of stainless steel. It's uh, 15 thousandths thick, if I remember right. And I'll be using that for the UWS-4 firewall. Now, as Dan points out, a significant drag of your airplane can be from cooling drag, cooling that engine. Let's skip this little bullet for the moment. And Dan has an equation for trying to calculate how much area your inlet for cooling should be and also how to calculate how big your exit should be. They are not necessarily the same size. So here's the equation he came up with and use the speed you're going to be climbing at multiplied by 2.2. That quantity is underneath your brake horsepower for your engine. In our case, that's 35 horsepower. And we got that from part three video of the aerodynamic design of the UWS-4 Ultralight. And then your result is going to be in square feet. And that's the inlet for your cooling area. Now our climb, I'm going to guess, is about 32 knots. It'll be anywhere from 30 up to about 38 would be my guess. And that's not a huge difference. I'm going to go ahead and choose 32. I think that's going to be pretty close. So if we plug all these values in here, we get about 0.27 square feet. And if you convert that to square inches, it's about 40 square inches. So the inlet could be about 4 inches by 10 inches. If it's two inlets, of course, you'd cut that in half. So it'd be about 10 inches by 2 inches for each inlet. Well, now you've got to figure out where in the world you're going to put the inlet. Now, on a tractor configuration, that's pretty easy. You stick it right up there in the nose, or you could stick it just underneath the nose. And that's a great place to put it because you've got positive pressure, ram pressure, pushing that air in. Well, on a pusher, that's more difficult you're usually gonna have that inlet somewhere on the back part of your fuselage. And that's usually a pressure recovery area. So you don't have ram pressure there, at least not typically. So that's a little bit more difficult for us. But I think I've found a fairly good place to put mine. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Now that kind of leads me to this bullet up here. Now, I've already gone through the process of trying to figure out what that shape of the aft part of the fuselage is gonna be with that engine and the propeller and the inlets and outlets. And that got so curvy that I decided it was gonna be just too darn difficult to do with aluminum, sheet aluminum. 
at least back on that part, and I'm guessing probably on the whole fuselage, I'm going to use some S-Class composites in order to make the shapes. That way I can make the shapes anything that I want. Now I could use carbon fiber, it's certainly a possibility, but if I were going to do that, since most of the airplane is going to be aluminum, I would have to electrically isolate a carbon fiber fuselage from the aluminum. That's not too difficult to do, but carbon fiber is also a lot more expensive. So at least initially, I'm going to try an S-glass fuselage and cabin. And at least that's for the outside shape. We haven't talked about the internal part of it yet, which we'll talk about in the next video. Now let's figure out what the cooling exit size should be. Well, this turns out to be pretty easy. Dan says that the ratio of the exit size to the inlet size should be 0.8. Or another way to say that, the exit size should be 80% of the inlet size. So if we put the inlet size and that 0.8, we get 0.215 square feet for the outlet area. And there's also a clue for where to put this outlet. You want to put it where you have low pressure. So you want to put it as far back as you can on the fuselage. For us, it's going to be somewhere along the trailing edge of the pod. We've gone to a fuselage that looked like this in the last video to this. So we just had some modifications here on the aft end of the fuselage. I've gone through and made all the changes to the fuselage that we just talked about. So let's go over them one by one. As you can see, as we've had from very early on in the design, we have a pusher configuration. Now the distance the prop is behind the wing, let's do a left hand view. You can see it's not anywhere near a third of the cord of the wing. So that would be about a third of the cord. So the, we'd have to be out to about here if we followed that footnote in Dan's advice. But in order to move that out there, I'd have to put quite a bit more structure in here. And I don't want to do that just because it'd be pretty heavy. In the end, if my empty weight is around 248, 249 pounds, which leaves me five or six pounds of weight margin, I might go ahead and do it because that will make the prop more efficient and it'll give us a little more range. Now the firewall will be about right here. And that's right where I put the scoop for the cooling inlet. So right in here, we're going to have a bulkhead of stainless steel. It'll be thin sheet. Now I could move it a little bit further aft. That would make it a little bit shorter, a little narrower, and save some weight. I'm a little concerned. Let's, let's go ahead and do a top view. So here you can see the inlet scoops. Right here is where the firewall would be. So if I move that firewall up here a little bit farther, that would move the scoops down about here. So it would save a little bit of weight, but now I'm getting where I gotta make a pretty sharp turn to get that inlet air to go into this engine. And by the way, that's one of the things I've done. I've done a really crude model of my engine. This is a Cayuna UL2 engine. So right in here, there's a fan that blows air through these cylinder heads. And what I'd like to do, again, to save weight, is I'm just gonna leave this area open in here so the air can go however it wants to. So I've got a fairly nice, simple, pretty straight shot right now into where that fan is. So if I move the firewall back here, the scoops back here, the air has to make a little bit more of a turn. So it's going to be a little bit more drag. So we've got a trade-off between drag and weight. And that's something that we have frequently on this airplane. Now, as you can see, we have two inlets. They're about two inches by 10 inches. So if you add those together, we get about 40 square inches of input and we calculated 39 square inches. So that works out pretty good. Now on the outlet, that's back here. Back here, we have a circular outlet. So this darker area right in here, that's open and that's where our air will come out. So let's do a top view. So right here is where our cooling air will come out. And again, this area here is about 80% of our inlet area. One thing I'm not sure that I'm going to do is have this rear cap on here. I have a feeling that this air coming around here and the cooling air are going to be so turbulent that I don't think I'll get any sort of drag reduction by having this cone on here on this trailing edge. I might do a little experiment with it and try it with and without to see if there's a difference, but I don't think there's going to be a difference. And since I don't think there's going to be a difference, that's one of the reasons I just cut this off here. Initially, I was thinking of having some cooling air coming through here. I don't really see any benefit to that. I think we're just going to truncate it. So we talked about positive air and negative air. So what would have been more ideal is to move these scoops up around here on the widest part. I would have had just a little more pressure to help push this air in. But if I had done that, I would have had to put some ducting in here to get it through the firewall. And I really didn't want to do that. That was going to add a little bit of weight. 
but I do have some nice negative pressure here on this aft end that should really do a good job of sucking that cooling air out. And having these scoops back here shouldn't be too bad of a problem. One of the things that this prop is going to do is it's going to help keep this air attached as it's coming around on this pressure recovery part of the fuselage. So I don't think we'll have quite as much negative pressure here as we would have without the prop. So I think it's going to work out okay. And as I mentioned previously also, there are a lot of curves, compound curves here. And trying to do this with aluminum is certainly possible, but I don't have the equipment like an English wheel to make these curves. So I think I'm going to use composites to do it. And at least on the first one, it's going to be fiberglass, probably S-glass fiberglass. And there's still lots and lots of details we need to work out for all that cooling. Lots that I thought about that I didn't put in this video because I didn't want the video to get too long. But we will cover it in the future. Well, what are we going to do next? Speaking of the future, next video we're going to do is on the structure. And basically, we're going to come up with where we want to put bulkheads, spars, ribs. We won't really get into the design of those. Right now, we're just thinking about where we want them to be. Again, I'm going to use OpenVSP to help me do that. OpenVSP knows about ribs and bulkheads and skins and spars. Now, I haven't used that much yet, so it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve, but we'll see what we can do with it. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up on it. And if you haven't done it yet, think about subscribing to the channel. And of course, in order to get notified when new videos go up, make sure that bell is enabled. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.